Good afternoon. Wait, wait, I was gonna say, I, I'm from Harlem, so we're gonna try that again. Good afternoon. <laughs> President McBride, Provost White, trustees, deans, faculty, staff, alumni, distinguished honorees, and above all, graduates with your friends and families here today. I would like to congratulate you all on this most momentous occasion. You have all triumphed, not only in your pursuit of higher education, which led you to this day, but also in reaching the next step in your journey. As I look at you all today, I can't help but feel deeply inspired by you on what you have achieved in earning your degrees from the New School at this moment. I feel so privileged to be part of this wonderful occasion where we celebrate you, who you are, who you have become, what you have overcome, and who you are yet to be. Thank you. You are, thank you. You are celebrating your commencement as the COVID-19 pandemic continues globally and we continue to live in an overwhelmingly complicated world, a time of great social and political upheaval, you are stepping into this uncertain world in the midst of so many attacks on much of what we all hold dear and true. But you know all of this, right? because you all have been living and working and studying through this all, and this is the world you have inherited. It's what you've been learning about, what you've absorbed, what you've been thinking about creatively, artistically, and intellectually, and what you've experienced. And now it is up to you to lend your voice and your vision to change. Like the founders of the New School who responded to their own time by promoting a radically different idea, a new innovative model of education that in would enable transformation, enable hope, you are now tasked to see a way upwards and onwards. You are bearers of this incredible legacy. And my charge to you on this day of rejoicing is to discover for yourselves, each in your own way, how to carry forward what you have learned in these years. And in defiance of everything that says you can't, I hope you all will know that you can. Yes. I am sure as you have learned, as we all have over this past moment, Everything in life offers a lesson. Along with today's other honorees who I'm so humbled to share the stage with, they all teach us by their presence that there are multiple, multiple ways towards transformative action. I'm thrilled to be called upon today to speak from the path I've pursued in the arts, which the founders of the New School recognize as both a reflection of a society, but also a potential force for social justice and for good. Artists for me are our true visionaries. With creativity and purpose, they allow us through their work to reflect on the past and envision the future. They allow us to see what they hold in their heads and their hearts through words and images, sounds and movement. They allow us a chance to understand and engage with ourselves and each other. They expand our world in powerful and profound ways. So it won't be a surprise that I turn to the words of an artist to help me speak to you today. I begin with some lines from one of our greatest poets, Gwendolyn Brooks the first black woman appointed poet laureate of the United States, who in 1983 wrote a poem titled Paul Robeson. I'm going to read the last lines of this iconic poem. We are each other's harvest. We are each other's business. We are each other's magnitude and bond. Brooks wrote these words and they form a forceful call they have always inspired me 
by what I know that she must have been thinking in writing these words to her audience of that day, but to us standing here today in the future. Think with me for a moment about the progression in those lines. We are each other's, excuse me. Think with me for a moment about the progression in those lines. We are each other's harvest, then we are each other's business, then higher again to we are each other's magnitude and bond. In these words, Brooks speaks of mutuality and community and perhaps reminds us all of the essential fact that we do not exist in these spaces alone. You have earned the degree you received today, but it was also achieved with the help and sacrifice of many around you. The ancestors who have guided you and guide us all, the parents, the teachers, the community, those who saw you for who you are and helped you along this journey. But it's also the people we don't see, but who also make it possible for us to do what we do. And it's also with those people who we hold in our hearts every day who have gone on, but are with us here always. Along with your degree today, you become part of a mighty community and become responsible for it and for each other. That's how I got here today here standing in front of you as the director and chief curator of the Studio Museum in Harlem. I got here through the many people who paved the way, who made it possible, who opened doors, and who allowed me to see what was possible for me. See, I grew up not far from here, right down the Grand Central Parkway in St. Albans, Queens. Yes for Queens. Yes. Yes for Queens. When, when I was growing up in Queens, when we referred to Manhattan, we referred to it as the city, as in you were going to the city. And as a young person growing up, I reveled in the fact that the city was full of culture, from the great Queens Museum of Art that's right here where we are today, in Flushing Corona Park, to all the museums around the city that I thought were mine that allowed me access and allowed me to dream and think of who I could be. It was in that time through art that a new world opened up to me. I studied art history in college along with a dual degree in African American studies and through art my love of art and art history and my commitment to black people was formed. It was in that time I also sought out examples because I knew the path I was taking was a new one, one that perhaps not many had before. And in that, I found examples and mentors, and very particularly for me, the work of another Queens native, Dr. Lowry Stokes Sims, who I sought out and was guided by her achievements. So a dozen years into my curatorial career, when Dr. Sims hired me to come back and work at the Studio Museum in Harlem, a place where I interned when I was in college, that she was then leading, after having spent a decade at the Whitney Museum of American Art, I jumped at the opportunity because I knew it was a job of a lifetime and it would allow me to pursue my own particular path with purpose and with passion. So I am proud today to be the director of this great institution. By taking inspiration from this beloved mentor, I was able to develop a career and a life. And then by following the example of exceptional artists and working with them, I was able to advance the idea of the voices and visions of black artists all over the world. But if you really want lasting change and you really want to make it stick, then you have to eventually devote yourself not only to your own path, but to others to your people. And I have been thrilled to be able to have dedicated my work to building an institution for my people and for all people. This institution, which was born in a moment just like the one we're in now in 1968, over a course of a half century, has catalyzed change in the cultural world. Today, we look at our future as we are constructing a new home envisioned for us by the great architect, Sir David Ajay. It's a project that's required years of planning and construction and the coordinated labors of hundreds of people.
Clearly, the project is much bigger than me or any individual associated with it. What it will do for the institution, for the multitudes of people we serve, for the Harlem community, for the city of New York, will outlast the lives of myself or our many collaborators. The new home of the Studio Museum is a pledge we make to our artists, our community, and our city, and audiences for generations to come. This is the reality of it, and this is the poetry. We make what's possible for each other happen when we exist in common community with each other through a common cause. I don't in any way expect my journey to be one that is an example for you in an exact way because everyone's journey is unique. But what I will share is that my journey with its many triumphs but also its many challenges would not be possible without hope and without, without a vision of what could be. So I charge you all today to hold that vision of what you hope can be for you dear and close. Speak it to yourselves and speak it to those around you. What is it that you want to change in the world? Look to your left and then look to the right and take in the immense talent and knowledge that's sitting right around you, collectively pre present in your classmates who are graduating with you today. As you embark on your long road ahead, see this community as your grounding core and share with each other all that is possible for you. Think of the many alumni who've come before you, including your classmates from the classes of 2020 and 2021. It is never too soon to begin along the path that will define the rest of your life. Don't be so humble as to never start or try at all. With passion and purpose and intention and fortitude, with heart and a whole lot of hustle, we can all work towards what we dream in the world, things that are far larger than ourselves and we can create meaningful change. So today, at this 86th commencement ceremony of the New School, I want to offer you hope, defiant hope, the kind that stares down challenges and refuses to accept things as they are. As the great tennis champion and Presidential Medal of Freedom recipient, Arthur Ashe, who this stadium is named for, said, I quote, start where you are, use what you have, do what you can. Hope is often disguised as unyielding resourcefulness and crucial optimism. These words have inspired me throughout my life and have served as a pers personal mission statement, one that in its simplicity and clarity are powerful. I hold out defiant hope for you, graduates, because I know you all have worked hard and persisted to get to this moment. I hold out hope in the spirit of this great institution, the New School, and I do so while charging you to start where you are, use what you have, do what you can. Now as I watch you commence on your various journeys, endeavors, and career, I'm filled with hope, hope for what is to come, and that is the hope I bring to you. Go now on your own in all of your individuality with the optimism, courage, and bravery, all that you can muster, and begin to remake this world. We need you to do this. It will be lonely sometimes, it will be hard, but you also will have moments of joy. As you continue, I promise we all will be here cheering you on because we are each other's magnitude and bond. To all of you, your families, your friends, those who you love, my deepest congratulations to the class of 2022. Thank you.